Welcome to Hillary Topper On Air, the podcast you can't afford to miss. Brain drain on Long Island has been an issue at the forefront of many people's minds. Companies across Long Island are trying to combat this shortage of a future workforce, especially in STEM-related career paths. But how can we reach the student and parent population to increase awareness about career opportunities right here on Long Island? I'm Hillary Topper, and this is Hillary Topper On Air. Today, I'm speaking with Ken White of Brookhaven National Laboratory and Andrew Parton of the Cradle of Aviation, who are both co-stewards of the Long Island STEM Hub, an organization consisting of industry, academic, and nonprofit volunteers working to advance STEM education effectiveness on Long Island. Welcome to the show, guys. Great to be here. Thank you, Heller. So we'll start with you, Ken. Could you tell us a little bit about Long Island STEM Hub, how it was uh, formed, and what was the purpose originally, and what the purpose is today on Long Island, and why it's so important? I know it's a lot of questions in one. That is. That's not in one question. (laughs) (laughs) You're right. Um, The STEM Hub was formed back in December 2011, and uh, there was a lot of conversation before that what we realized is is Long Island is big, you know, 110 miles long and, and a lot of people here and many, many assets on, on the island that are working to uh, educate our young people, particularly in, in the STEM field, science, technology, engineering, and math, for those who aren't familiar with what STEM means. And we realized that we weren't working closely enough together. There was a lot of duplicate effort that was going on and there was also a lot of holes in the system for the jobs that are here on Long Island. We weren't necessarily encouraging young people to think about those jobs. And so the intent of the STEM hub was to begin to pull us all together as a network, a community of people uh, in, as you mentioned at the beginning, industry, academia, not-for-profits, uh, museums such as Andy's uh, Cradle of Aviation to help us better understand what one another uh, we're doing for that population, for students and teachers to, to help them understand the jobs that were here on Long Island and how to prepare for them. And these STEM jobs are good jobs. They typically pay 75% above the average uh, income or wage here on the island. So we did a gap analysis. We looked at uh, where young people could begin to find their best opportunities in STEM. And it turns out really their schools are the best place to start looking at programs and activities like robotics and other things. And then to begin to look at the programs that are offered at places such as such as ours, Brookhaven National Laboratory, at Andy's Cradle of Aviation, other museums, and also um, within the university systems, of which there's 19 across the island, and many of them have, have programs too. And so that was our goal, to work together more collaboratively, to fill the holes where uh, students weren't getting the programming that uh, needed to be offered for our industry jobs that were available, and to to begin to work understanding each other's resources so we could be more competitive going after grant funds as well. Now, Andy, tell me a little bit about the new series of career videos and curriculum called Full STEM Ahead Long Island. Can you talk a little bit about the video series and why it's so important? Well, it's it's uh, part of the communication effort to, uh, I think, expose students, parents, uh, teachers, guidance counselors, school administrators, and industry itself as to um, the exciting careers that exist right here on Long Island. Um, in most industries, people may know one or two jobs, um, something near and dear to uh, the museum's heart is commercial aviation and most people know a pilot and a flight attendant what they don't understand and know about is the hundreds or thousands of jobs in between those two jobs Um, so a lot of the work of the videos which came through a grant from the regional economic development council um, of the state was to expose in a fun informative way um, you know all the different opportunities that do exist here on long island because um, the challenge is the communication effort. I mean, we have to market 
STEM jobs, STEM careers here on Long Island, much like you would be marketing um, paper towels. Uh, we need to get in front of the right people. Uh, the video is just a part of a series of activities and events that the STEM Hub has uh, you know, put together over the years, and this will be kind of puts a little bit of a meat on the bones or a new uh, tool in the toolbox that uh, we can use and schools can use and industry can use. So can you both share some interesting career paths that you explore on these videos? Sure, I, I like the one, one of them in particular that's uh, at the very, the very first episode. It was, in fact, we were excited because it was nominated for a New York Emmy. Um, and that one involves a kind of a small to mid-sized business that's right here on Long Island in the Hop Hog Industrial Association area. And they're doing composite work on airplanes. They, they get their contracts because they're really good at what they do and, and they get called for some of the problem uh, challenges in a design for, for aircraft, for example. And the other side of that episode was a entrepreneurial guy. He was a teacher, uh, grew up in Center Riches, I believe it was, but he liked to surf, which is a Long Island pastime. He uh, started building his own surfboards. His friend wanted a surfboard. His friend's friends wanted a surfboard. Long story short, he starts a business making surfboards, and he's using high-tech technology to do that. He uses um, machinery to start to cut the shapes of the boards. He uses computing programs to calculate out based on height, weight, skill level, things like that, what that board should look like. And one of the young men that he has working for him is a student out of Northport, went to a program called Project Lead the Way, which is uh, for engineering and design. It's a pretty structured program that many of the schools use. Uh, he was interested in that. He went to Suffolk Community College and, and began to get his core courses and was headed off to Stony Brook for an engineering program. And so, so here's this young man out of Northport is following a path using Long Island uh, academic resources to prepare him for, for engineering and design and working on surfboards, uh, one of which their claim to fame is the, the two-piece surfboard, cutting it in half, putting carbon fiber rods through it and uh, reassembling it when you're when you're out there ready to surf and so he's this young man is very excited about that he used long island's academic processes and he's he's deeply involved in an entrepreneurial venture interesting and you had other big companies like JetBlue and cameron engineering andy can you talk a little bit about that and how they got involved yeah well JetBlue. um being, you know, kind of New York's uh, hometown airline has been always been very concerned about the um, lack of uh, talent or uh, people interested in going to commercial aviation. So they got involved not just at the cradle uh, of Aviation Museum, but also the STEM hub, because they want to expose kids to the different career paths that exist in aviation. You don't, everybody doesn't have to become a pilot. Uh, there are a variety of jobs. Um, most of them are STEM related, either in IT or uh, creating new apps for, um, uh, you know, buying tickets or things like that, as well as uh, designing aircraft, uh, engineering new aircraft, uh, operations management, uh, a whole variety of things. So they looked at it as an opportunity to kind of uh, almost create their own school um, to sell these jobs to kids. And so getting involved in the, the video project was, uh, uh, was a great partnership. So before we move on, I want to just thank our sponsors because I am so appreciative of them. Please support our sponsors and tell them that you heard about them on Hillary Topper on Air. Special thanks to the Russo Law Group, Strain Print, The Profit Express, and Fortune Off Fine Jewelry. So back to you, uh, Ken and Andy. We're talking about new career videos uh, launch of Full STEM Ahead Long Island. The series includes 10 videos in total. What industries do they actually cover besides the ones that you talked about before? So, so there's a pretty wide cross-section of these industries. We, 
Uh, you know, of course, being here at Brookhaven National Laboratory, we have some of it covers the science and engineering parts. We had uh, two young engineers working on what's called an electron ion cooler, and that will be part of a new uh, roughly somewhere between 1.6 and 2.6 billion dollar project here at the laboratory. And so uh, the excitement of being a mechanical or electrical engineer working on uh, really challenging uh, projects that are oftentimes one of a kind to uh, working and doing scientific research in our National Synchrotron Light Source 2, which is the, the premier light source for studying things like protein structure uh, in the world, and then crossing over to the people at Cold Spring Harbor Laboratory that are doing some of the most cutting edge research in the life sciences, looking at cancer and, and other diseases and things that are, are really important for humanity. And then we uh, crossed into energy. And so, for example, uh, solar panels and use and uh, smart grid technology, how you can manage energy through computing and new programmable logic type controllers to uh, PSE and G, or PSEG and how they look at outage work and the engineering type people they need at PSEG. Uh, we also, you mentioned Cameron Engineering before, mm -hmm. was another engineering source where we looked at civil and environmental engineering. A uh, huge amount of infrastructure work taking place across Long Island as we look at uh, climate change, renewal of our, of our utility systems, uh, transit-oriented development that's taking place. There's, there's enormous opportunities in the uh, civil and environmental engineering pieces. And then uh, we went off also and looked at some of the manufacturing type work uh, and aviation uh, opportunities that Andy spoke of. So full disclosure, <clears throat> we helped you produce these videos. And the first episode, Crushing It with Composites, was actually nominated for a New York Emmy, which is what you had said earlier. How did that make you guys feel? <laughs> uh, we were pretty excited about it here. The, you know, I should, as we're giving credit here, I should credit uh, the Regional Economic Development Council, which is one of 10 regions in New York State, Long Island region, has a group of very dedicated leaders across Long Island who put a lot of energy into, into bringing money home here and have won actually the top amount a number of years. Uh, the funding for that grant was through through that economic development process with Empire State Development. And so we were excited to get that and have Hillary Topper, um, you know, the HJMT on board along with Waldo Cabrera and my LITV. Uh, it, was, it was a different process for us. We do videos and things, but we haven't done this type of video. And, you know, for the laboratory, we have seven Nobel Prizes, but now we have one Emmy nomination. <laughs> Well, it was, it Ken, didn't great. you didn't you say you wanted to take the composite thing to Broadway at some point? Uh, that would be a fun <laughs> thing too. <laughs> so. We just have to find the right lyricist for the the music and the the words. That's awesome. That's awesome. So, um, Andy, do you have a favorite video? Well, I'm I'm partial to uh, the commercial aviation one mm -hmm. just because it's uh, what we kind of live and breathe every day, and it it fits in with. Uh, we've started through the STEM Hub um, a program called Career Conversations, uh, where we had uh, a parent and a student come to an evening event, and we had all of these industries that have been featured in the uh, video series talk to uh, parents and kids about the different career paths, but do it in a TED Talk style. Um, so they were very quick. Um, each was no more than 10, 11 minutes. Uh, and then there was an opportunity afterwards for the kids to meet with either the speakers or other companies or local schools. So it was a kind of a, a good thing that we started last fall and, and hope to roll out in smaller versions uh, in different parts of the island. But, um, you know, it's there's this communication effort to get the word out to people is probably the most difficult part of the process because mm -hmm everybody's attention span tends to be decreasing to, you know, a few seconds. Uh, and, uh, you know, parents still don't know how to guide their kids. Um, schools, teachers sometimes don't know. Uh, so making them all aware of the different uh, 
career paths that do exist. Um, you know, we try to say that if you're interested in a certain industry, you can go to school locally here and you can get a job here. So just piggybacking off of that, how will you try to get students to watch the videos? Will, how, how will it be launched through the schools? So we're, we're looking at a variety of options here. We think the career conversation pieces that Andy has talked about will be quite good. We find uh, both teachers and students engaged in that. Uh, many of the groups within the STEM hub uh, consortium have strong relationships with the schools and teachers. And so, for example, one thing we've done uh, pretty consistently over the last few years is a SIED day or a teacher professional development day where a number of the schools across Long Island tend to send their teachers out for training. And so that's going to be a great place to feature these videos and, and to work with the teachers on how to use them in their classrooms. There's other, other opportunities that um, this Suffolk County Science Teachers Association, for example, there's a career tech ed conference that happens. And, and what we're trying to do is connect curriculum with these videos so the so teacher who sees this can actually uh, have a way to introduce it into the classroom and to share that content. So, so there's a variety of ways. And then, of course, the website that uh, HJMT helped us put together, listemhub.org. And I was just going to ask you, how do people get in touch with Long Island <laughs> STEM Hub and um, to either partner with you or support the organization or even watch the new video series called STEM Ahead Long Island? So, so that's the uh, listemhub.org, the Long Island STEM Hub.org. It's just uh, listemhub.org. And you can find these videos and we'll be featuring uh, one of these each month for the next, uh, roughly the next year. There's awesome. 10 episodes total. Awesome. Um, I want to thank you both so much for being on the show. I also want to thank our sponsors, the Russo Law Group, Strain Print, and Fortune Off Fine Jewelry, and also the Profit Express. And last but not least, I want to thank you, our listeners, for tuning in. If you want more information on this show or any other show, visit HillaryTopperOnAir.com. Or you can find us on Spotify, iTunes, Google Play, SoundCloud, MixCloud, Amazon Alexa. You name it, we're out there. Have a great week, and we'll see you next time.